New time splitters announced. New time splitters. There's a new time splitters. Who's making it for radical design and making it? They're back. With some of the original founders and developers. There's a, there's a new time splitters. New, ti new, new time splitters. New, new ti time splitters is special. I mean, the first one's a bit old. It's a PS2 launch style, for fuck's sake. And it has a level set on Planet X, which has laser guns, aliens, cyborgs, and is set in the year 2020. I mean, the second one, also quite old, Futuristic Neo Tokyo, is set in 2019, but it has held up much better with some quite sane people that it's arguably the best FPS ever made. And then, the third game, Future Perfect, which is the best FPS game ever made. I mean, what other game had a multiplayer mode that let you play as a monkey, a reanimated moose, a possessed child, giant robots, a demon clown, a skeleton who's a sheriff, a T-Rex, an octopus, an entire school of fish, a gingerbread man, a redneck cactus, or a cyborg chip, which is basically just a monkey again, only badass. And that's only a handful of the 150 abominations you can play as. That was just in the multiplayer mode. Now, there's a new time splitters on the way from Free Radical Design. They've been re-glued back together. But let's be real, it's still years away. Probably three or four. Let's not think about it too much. But it's okay. Because it's coming. It's real. And it's happening. I want to believe. In not as good news this week, the previews for Deathloop came out. And anyone else a little disappointed. I thought we were up for an open world time loop game with clever repetition, tight time limits and no margin for error a la Outer Wilds. But no, apparently the game is broken into four distinct districts and you choose which ones to go in in order morning to night, meaning that if you spend a thousand hours sitting in one of them, nothing will happen. Time will not move on until you're done with a level. There's zero time pressure and just, you know, 24 combinations of levels. Also, this... It just happens to be a world that resets every day. It is still a linear story. I don't know. Sure, it's an arcane game, so it's going to be a blast. I was just hoping for something a bit more, you know, clever, clever. Our Wilds proved it can be done. Although, to be fair, that's literally the best game ever made. Also this week, Devolver Digital panicked the shit out of me with heavy rumours that they're going to go public at the end of this year with a potential value of a billion money. Now here's a phrase that's never been said before. Wow, I'm so glad that company went public. They've never been more creative and fun. Going public is just a money thing for money people. You know the type, suits, bottled water, thinking that a haircut is worth anything more than five pounds. Just, what are they gonna get out of going public? What, what do you get out of going public? I don't know. Well, here's something. I stole from the top result of Google. A value for securities can be established, increased access to capital raising opportunities, both public and private financing, and expansion of investor base. Liquidity, liquidity, is that a word? Liquidity for investors is enhanced and securities can be traded through a public market. I don't know what any of that means. Although the bit about turning investors into liquid sounded fun, but I know that they're not talking about interesting game mechanics and gory pixel art. They're not talking about creativity. Art and money don't mix. They separate awkwardly, like oil and water, or Elon Musk and reality. When you do eventually force them to collide, you get NFTs, which is just stealing while also fucking the environment to death. And then on top of this panic, Devolver Digital dropped the trailer for Phantom Abyss, which looks fantastic. A first person Indiana Jones who's left the oven on game about being randomly generated trap filled temples. Whilst playing, you see the ghosts of other people who have failed on that level. And if you beat the level, it's gone. You claim it is yours. That is brilliant. So, from the heart, don't lose this bit of you, DD. Can I call you DD? You know, where's that anarchic energy going to go when the investors ring and say, can we have a bit less blood on Nina Struthers this time around? Either you say no and the company collapses, or you agree and get all money demented. Look, imagine 10 years down the line and Devolver announced their next Breath of the Wild meets Dark Souls loot box riddled free play game for phones with a coherent plot and not a single bit of pixel gore. That world is a dark place indeed. Back to the light. Psychonauts 2 seems to be gearing up for a launch, even though we don't actually have a release date for it yet. But seriously, I think the game is coming out really, really soon. This past week, we've seen a new update video where everyone is working on final polish and bug fixing, exclusive Game Informer bits, and a 30 minute look at the game's accessibility options. My bet is that the E3 announcement, and yes, I'll be doing E3 again this year, whatever form it fucking takes, the announcement will be a very close release date. Couple of months tops. Maybe, but my hope 
Do I dare dream? Stealth drop. Microsoft conference available now. Game pass, mic drop. I mean, Ratchet and Clank just uploaded its video about its accessibility settings and that game is due out on the 11th of June. E3 is the 12th to the 15th of June and don't they tend to hold these conferences the day before? Anyway, E3 or not, Psychonauts is coming and I cannot fucking wait. But anyway, that's all from me. I'm off to wait. Ah, oh, shit.